following day, 2.45 in the afternoon, and we've got the majority of the roof on. A few little problems. Finding the purlins is a real bastard. So some of the screws are a little bit zigzag because all of the purlins are kind of bent and bowed. So it's not been plain sailing to hit them. And then this top section of the roof came in at a wedge shape. So it was uh, four and a half meters over there. Then it finishes this end at 4.8 meters. I ordered all the sheets at the same size. So a couple of little bits were short. So we've had to just put an extra piece of sheeting in there to make up for that. Uh, because what I didn't want to happen, as you can see along the top, start to come away from the ridge. So it's obviously, it'll be covered by the cap in here. Plenty of uh, plenty of space for it, but um, I just wanted to make sure they were supported. Right, my phone's going to die. We'll have to pick this up later. Good morning, folks. There we have it. The roof from a bit of a distance. And as you can see, we've been rained off today, so I won't be going up there, but we've got almost half of the roof done. And uh, it's quite hard work on your own, actually. So what's happening in here today? Well, floor is drying off nicely, and we've had some epoxy uh, floor ingredients, if you like, delivered. So, I'm going to surprise everyone now. That's the colour we're going for, for the main brewery floor, blue. So, we've got some rapid set epoxy repair mortar for doing all those joints there. I should sort that out. And we've got all these tins here are the epoxy primer that goes down onto the concrete after we've prepared it, like we are doing over there. We've not got much further than that at the minute, though. And then we've got uh, the high build epoxy floor coating and also some high tack uh, primer which goes on the concrete before we add the repair mortar. That makes sense. So what you do with this stuff is you add part B into a tin of part A, mix it up and then apply it to the floor and it should be dry within 24 hours and chemical resistant and hopefully permanent. So that's how this job is progressing. Here are the remaining sheets to go on. There's a little plan, if you like. This is the uh, CAD drawing that I did of it. And we're all the way up to sheet F, and on this side up to these two sheets here. So all that section's done, and all that section's done. I've just got to chuck these sheets up and screw them down and screw the ridge cappings on. It's going really quite well. We've got the floor drainage up again. Uh, I've added some acrylic concrete sealer to the uh, concrete here. This is just so we're going to have to do some canning before we get the epoxy floor down. So it's just to prevent that concrete getting wet again during canning and brewing and whatever else. Uh, I need to clean a bit of sand out, obviously. This is from washing the unit down because it's been quite messy for the past week or so doing all these other projects. But it's best to do them now while we're not really producing anything than try and do it while we're mid-production in the middle of summer or something like that. Gemma has very kindly just been out here in our little yard. It's only a small little yard that's got to come down. Don't buy a tarpaulin from Tool Station didn't even last a year. So these firkins here are surplus to requirements. We're going to give them away perhaps on Brewing Professional page or something like that. I don't know if you guys will see this in time. Maybe I'll put this out first on YouTube. So if anyone locally who's got a little brewery wants them, there are 18 plastic firkins. They used to be part of the Boggart Hole Brewery stock which we acquired through an auction uh, years ago you might remember the video we've got all the stainless ones up there we weighed all the aluminium ones in uh, we have the proper rights on them in terms of uh, registration with Cass Kegwatch so uh, if you would like them 
drop me a line and uh, if you can come and pick them up and take them all you can have them not the steel ones the plastic ones right yeah that's pretty much covered everything apart from yeah I wanted to go up here and just tell you what the crack is so let's go up these new mezzanine stairs new he says and up here I'm just removing any junk and relocating all this stuff these are 100 litre casks or thereabouts um, they're what they're called now kilderkins so I thought I'd lost them but it turns out they were buried under all this junk so all this lot is going to be moved down the way just uh, so when we come up the stairs we've got an area to kind of store stuff just here and I'm going to take these old doors down, we were saving these because they can be used to make a door wall which is what we saved them for but we didn't need them all so kind of thinking do I need any at the minute I don't know I might get rid of them and we've also got some auto tilts up here and on the floor is the racking that the auto tilts would sit on so we could save that for a beer festival or indeed maybe another pub cellar at some point in the future so I'm going to carry on moving this stuff and we'll come back when it's done Well, that's definitely hard work. I've been down on my knees. Gemma's been down on her knees. And we've both been grinding away at this floor. And it could go quicker, but it's not too bad. So let's just turn the camera around. And I'll show you something that I've come up with to make it a little bit easier on the old knee joints. There we go. Look at that. So a very simple contraption, couple of wheels, grinder bolted onto a piece of wood, <coughs> utilising the handle um, connector with just a M8 bolt going through the side there, holds it nice and flat to the floor, it's actually very uh, good. So I'm going to set you up somewhere so you can see what's going on and you'll see it in action but yeah it's basically a couple of casters a little bit of a bodge in the middle so the casters are level that's why I've put that lap joint in there and then a bit of bracing just to stop it rocking around and just a piece of wood on the top for the handle and then we've got that attached to dust collector with a cyclone on top so we don't ruin the filter on the shop vac and I've just done all this area here in like five minutes just testing it out making sure that it works and it works so let's get you set up somewhere and you can well you can see for yourself
Well, what do you reckon to that? What a little nifty machine. So that is going to save my back big time. Look at all that section that we just did then in a couple of minutes. So we've almost got most of this done up here. Just a small section there to finish off. And unfortunately when we removed this cabinet I found a bit of cement that uh, we didn't patch up when we did this section. So that's been filled. That just means it's going to delay us laying the first coat of primer down. But cellar V, it is what it is. We want to do it properly. The only thing I'm not sure about is this piece of concrete over here. That was a patchwork that was done when we moved in. And you can see the circular marks in there. That is really, really sandy mix. I'm kind of reluctant to pull it out. It is out of the way. And uh, me being a perfectionist, if that was visible, because obviously we're going to have pallets here, but if it was visible or if it was near the cask washing area I'd redo that but because it's under the racking and it's pretty much not going to be exposed to any kind of foot traffic I think we're going to leave it and just hit it with a deep penetrating primer so just to give you an idea of how much stuff has come out of this relatively small area it looks kind of small uh, when you've got stuff in it but when you've taken everything out it looks kind of big and this is everything that came out so I think we've got eight pallets out here and the cask washer and then I put two pallets in this cold room just to make room or oh, nine pallets there's another pallet down here which is holding all of the um, primers resins, um, part A's, part B's and all that kind of jazz for the floor repair. So that's what we're on at the minute with. Up and down, roof and floor. Get it sorted, we'll be nice and dry. Top and bottom I think. And yeah this this stuff, let me show you while I've got it fresh in my mind. I walk down the brewery again just to show you what we're applying so this is the resin coat is where it all came from this is the primer and what have I done with it this isn't the coating so I was talking to Martin about this the other week this is just the UV resistant overcoat which I didn't punt for in the end because we're not outdoors, so to speak. Here it is. This is the stuff we've gone for. Resin coat, brewery floor coating. So it is ultra durable, chemical and sugar resistant, easy to clean. And uh, five kilos does 17 to 20 square meters. So it's definitely not the cheapest on the market. And I'll be putting down more than one coat but yeah, we'll just hit the top section at first, see how much coverage we get out of it, because I've got to repair all the cracks here and everything else. And if it covers well, then I should have enough to carry on and do all the, all the brewery if it covers what I've assumed it covers. If not, I'll just place another order before we start this section. Or, fail that, I'll probably end up just doing it in sections so I don't have to mix too much in one go or move too much equipment in one go because it only has a spreadable time of 40 minutes so it goes off pretty quick but mainly today I just wanted to show you that little contraption and how it's saving my knees and my back well, I think that's it for the evening, boys and girls. Was good. Just this centre patch to go. Uh, I've been at it for about 40 minutes. And I thought, better not burn the grinder out. Because I didn't have to stop. The difference being, when you're on your hands and knees, I had to stop like three times during this section here. Just because my back was hurting so much. But obviously, with this little contraption, eh? No problem. So I think we'll get this done tomorrow, maybe in two sections. 
and then I'll whack the primer down if this concrete here behind us has dried and then when the primer's down the next day first top coat the next day second top coat hopefully it will look fabulous we'll see though won't we and uh, you'll see as well if you remember to hit that subscribe button down below because obviously we're covering quite a lot of quite a lot of stuff these days so you don't really want to miss out and uh, make sure you hit the little bell thing as well because that'll tell you that there's a new video coming out and there will be a new video coming out probably tomorrow so we'll see you then cheers